Welcome to Plowman's Backyard. My name is Kendra and today we're going to be talking about the real reason why not to homestead. So I guess one of the very first topics we can talk about because everybody has this topic in mind when they want to think about homesteading or buying a homestead and that is finances. Today I know that the markets and stuff for buying houses and farms have definitely increased since we looked. We were looking for about 10 years. We've lived in this place now where we do all of our gardening, we raise our chickens, do all of our canning and we bought this about eight years ago. It's more of a challenge today because the prices have really gone up over the past four years. Now does that mean that you cannot homestead? In some cases it can. One, it depends on your location. If you're wanting to be a little bit closer to the city in the suburbs, yeah, that can be a huge issue if you're wanting to buy a homestead. If you're wanting to move further away, the prices do come down quite significantly, but it still raises some challenges. For one, I can tell you from experience that the further you get away from the city, things in prices come down. However, jobs tend to be a little bit more scarce and don't pay as much. You know, when we were originally looking we wanted acres and acres of land we wanted complete privacy we wanted a certain kind of house we were looking for some outbuildings because I knew that I wanted to have chickens I wanted to have some open space for a garden there's a lot of things that we were looking for and we ended up getting some of that but not all of it when you're looking at purchasing your new homestead or land or country home um, you may not necessarily get everything that you want in the first step I find that this can basically be a transitional thing now you may not be interested in moving numerous times but if you only have a certain amount of a budget and you can only afford a certain amount then you know what just start it with that and see how it goes maybe you won't even like homesteading anyways um, the other thing is is you can actually start homesteading where you are anyway even if you're in the suburbs or the city now you may be limited to livestock obviously um, i know some cities in some areas do allow chickens but only hens in a certain amount you can start gardening you can start canning and preserving anywhere you are so if you don't have the finances right now start small start learning to garden where you are start learning to garden in your own little small backyard and if you don't have that then start learning to can and preserve the foods that you can actually buy at the store however if you're wanting to and really um, encouraged to go out and buy that homestead or that country home that you're looking for then then take a look at your finances find out if you can afford the home closer to the city where you have your full-time jobs or part-time jobs or if you're going to move further from the city and going to need to find some new jobs and maybe even become self-employed because it's a little bit more difficult. That means that your expenses do go down some but also your income does come down some. But it's not just about that, it's also about the gas. The amount of gas that you spend when you move out of the city and the further that you go, we are about um, about an hour from a small city a couple small cities but about an hour and a half to the larger cities where we actually came from and where our actual jobs were so there is a transitioning that goes from that we did have to keep our jobs for a few years and travel a couple hours a day just to get to our jobs and transition into finding jobs locally or becoming self-employed the other thing is is you're not probably going to have all of the tools that you need or the equipment that you need right off the bat so you may not have a tiller right off the bat you may not have a tractor we still don't have a tractor or like a backhoe or all these things and that is a huge expense as well having those equipment that you need in order to have your homestead you have to see okay if we can't afford to have them is there places that are nearby that you can rent them and can you afford to rent them the other thing is outbuildings so you can buy a property that has outbuildings which tends to be a little bit more expensive but also if they don't have that then you can build your own outbuildings like such as a barn or things like that and then there is the expense of building them and they're not cheap because the price of wood has gone up um, so there's a lot of expenses that will stop you from so if you don't have the finances homesteading may not be for you but I can tell you that there are ways to work around it starting off small is your number one key whether you're starting off buying a home starting off um, buying a piece of land starting off your first time garden or starting off maybe raising a couple livestock instead of having this vision in your mind about having like all these cows and chickens and goats and whatever else you're thinking of start 
by thinking, okay, maybe we can have like one or two cows, maybe we can have four or five chickens, maybe we could have two or three goats, you know, and starting off with one thing at a time that you know that you can afford and devote your time to. Realistically, putting things into perspective when we're looking at expenses and planning ahead. You know, you can start out by buying your country property first and then putting expenses next year into your garden and the following year into a couple chickens. I think a lot of people get overwhelmed when they try to do everything all at once. Um, we started off small. We started off with a smaller garden our first year and we just kept expanding. We also, when we got chickens, we started off with just four or five and been expanding. We started off by planting one or two fruit trees and now we've got lots of fruit trees. We started off with a couple bushes, um, raspberry bushes, hascaps, things like that, and now we've got plenty. Expenses doesn't necessarily have to be the determination of whether or not you can or cannot homestead. The next reason why not to homestead is fear of failure. So a lot of people have a fear of failing and I'm going to tell you right now that if you have a fear of failing then don't even think about homesteading because I'm going to tell you you probably will be failing at some point on the homestead. Not having a success in something doesn't necessarily mean that I failed. What it means is that I've learned a lesson so that I can succeed the next time I do it. So yes, you will be making mistakes on your canning. You will be making mistakes on your gardening. Not everything is going to grow. There's gonna even be years where nothing really grows well. Why? Because it's not your fault, but there's other determining factors such as the climate and pests and things can really determine how well your garden does. The next thing is with chickens. I can tell you right now, if you've never had chickens before, you will probably fail at something with the chickens. Not necessarily your fault either, but it just comes down to the fact that you need to learn as you go. So not necessarily looking at failure as a instance of whether or not you should or should not homestead, but if you're the type of person that cannot move forward when something doesn't work out, homesteading is probably not for you. However, if you are the type of person that looks at failure and gets back up and tries again as a life lesson or as a lesson to continue to get better, then homesteading is for you. Not every year is always going to be the same, especially with chickens. There's things that come up, diseases. Sometimes you're going to have broody hens, sometimes you're not. One thing that we've learned about when since we've had chickens, I want to say for about six years, maybe a little longer, is new things come up. Um, new types of diseases come up, new types of pests that come up. We've lost chickens the last three years. Each year you get better. You find out ways of working around those things. You find out how to treat your chickens better, how to feed them better, how to care for them better. Maybe their housing needs to change. You started out with something small that you thought would work and the next year you find out, you know what, this did not work. It's not winter proof. It's not predator proof. Every year I find that we're always upgrading something to do with our chickens whether it's feed, whether it's shelter, whether it's protection, because every year is different. There's also going to be things on the homestead. You know, if you definitely, if you have equipment, you may not always know how to keep things running properly, um, whether it be from tractors to tillers to whatever else you have going on. There is definitely going to be things that don't work out and maybe you don't know how to fix them. Maybe somebody, maybe you don't have the finances to fix it. Does that mean that you're failing? No. Every year you're going to have challenges. And I think that's one of the things that I really like about homesteading. I like the challenge. Um, and I like that I am in all, not also improving my skills, but I'm also improving myself. The next thing on the list of reasons why not to homestead is laziness and procrastination. One thing I can tell you is being lazy on the homestead, you pretty much aren't going to do it. Why? Because things need to be done in a timely fashion. Whether you have chickens, whether you have livestock, cows, gardening, everything needs to be done in a timely fashion and at a specific time. No matter how you're feeling, the chickens need to be um, looked after every day regardless of what you're doing. Um, the nest boxes need to be cleaned regularly. They need to have clean water. They need to be fed. Um, check the eggs. You need to also be checking them for disease or pests or things like that. Um, they need to be dealt with in a timely fashion. If your chicken's sick, you can't leave it for a day. You have to deal with it that day. You have to usually end up separating them into a separate pen compared to your other chickens. Those things cannot be left until you feel like doing them, but they have to be done right away. Specifically, if you're milking 
milking a cow, it should typically be done at the same time every day. And you, you can't leave that for a day just because you don't feel like it. The next thing is gardening. If you're gardening in a cold climate like we do, and you have about 70 days to grow your food, then you need to have things planted at a very specific time. You can't leave things to be planted whenever you feel like it. You can't put stuff outside today because you, you're busy tomorrow. When you're gardening in order to preserve food and when you're gardening in order to provide food for your family, it's very different from gardening just for the fun of gardening and planting your things that need to be planted and say something has come up or like for instance my potatoes are still not in yet and it's the 2nd of July and they should have been planted a couple weeks ago but they haven't. Why? Because we've gotten so much rain. Basically if I had plans today and it's a beautiful day my it's a perfect condition to plant my potatoes I have to give up my plants and make sure that those potatoes get in the ground. That is how homesteading goes. It doesn't necessarily wait until you have time to do it. The other thing is, is if you're canning or preserving food, typically when we do canning, especially if you're doing like pears, plums, peaches, if you have done them before, you know that when the pears and peaches are ready, you have to can them. They do not wait, especially when you're doing canning and stuff like that. Um, procrastination will not be your friend. The next reason why not to homestead is if you think homesteading is trendy. <laughs> Yeah, trendy. If you think that you're wanting to start a homestead because it is the most popular thing to do, if it looks cool, homesteading may seem like it's glamorous and a fun thing to do when you're watching it on a YouTube video or on a TV show, but I can tell you from experience it is not so glamorous or trendy. That will get old real fast. Um, but I'll tell you that, you know, when it comes time to coming out on a winter day and um, maybe even in the spring when things are full of muck and your chicken coop stinks and and the animals are um, sick and different things like that it can get real old real fast it's not so cool when you got to have you know your mud boots on and you're out in the muck or the manure up to your knees it's not so fun when you're coming in with uh, chicken poo covered on your on your clothes or your arms homesteading doesn't seem so glamorous if you're used to going on vacation and having your money spent on other things like clothes and jewelry and whatnot and you know now my money gets spent on chickens and repairing coops and extra money spent on soil or manure for the um, for the for the garden. The other thing is if you're used to taking vacations all the time in the summer or going away on weekends you can pretty much kiss that goodbye because most of all of your time needs to be spent doing this and there's not necessarily going to be a lot of people that are going to want to do all the muck yuck work. One, finding someone to look after your homestead can be really tricky. The bigger that your homestead gets the more that there is to do the less likely you will be to find someone who's going to look after it. On vacation is a really nice thing. It is important to get away from the homestead once in a while if you can create a homestead that also feels like a vacation that's gold also if you want to check out some of the new merch we have going on this is the i'm valuable t-shirt that you can find on our website www.plowmansbackyard.com it's a new line here at plowman's backyard it's available now on our merch store so make sure you go and check out some of our new merch another reason why maybe homesteading is not for you is because fear of wildlife i know not a lot of people talk about this but it is definitely an issue if you're coming from the city and you have no knowledge Knowledge of the animals that you're moving into it can be quite scary um, I've talked to many people who've moved recently from the city that have no idea about the wildlife here in Canada that they're coming across so much so that I we actually had encountered a family that were so afraid um, they were staying with someone that I know they came from the city had bought a country home and they were absolutely terrified at night in the house with a window shut of the sound of the coyotes I know that sounds funny. It's not so funny necessarily because it is a fear for some people. We moved up here. I was actually afraid of bears. We have black bears here in Canada. Um, I've seen some large ones and I've seen some little ones as well. But one of our big, one of my fears was actually the bears. And because we would often be out walking in the woods, um, definitely during um, berry season. Um, I have a huge patch of uh, raspberries in the back here. Plus I go into um, the crown land and we go and we pick blackberries, which um, we've actually walked amongst some of these berries in the past with some friends of ours and have came across um, the sound of a bear. So we heard the bear in the bush 
um, in the raspberry bushes and he made known that he was there and it was terrifying but you know we just kind of stepped back we gave him a minute and he wandered off it wasn't so scary so if you are like that and have a fear of the wildlife that you're not sure about in your area I would say one do research because I think that you can reduce your fears by knowledge of these animals so we moved up here about you know we were looking in the area here for about 10 years ago we bought about eight years ago I have not seen a wild like a real bear in the wild until this year <laughs> we've been here that long one because um, of our area we have a, a few neighbors around also we have a dog um, having a dog can really reduce um, the encounters that you're going to have by having a bear around they are checking the area scoping the area out as well as leaving their scent around learning um about how maybe for my instance how does the bear work time of the year would i find him more prevalently and how can i prevent an encounter with him so make sure you know for one if we're out walking in the woods we're extra noisy we talk louder we bring a bear bell bring you know bear spray whatever you need so sometimes our fears um stop us from doing something like buying a homestead and there really isn't a need to have a fear we have um, coyotes around we had a coyote here last year just checking out our chickens I was watching him from the bedroom window going back and forth along the chicken fence and he just wandered off and he did his thing um, we've encountered some moose locally here over the years a lot of moose this year um, you know just making sure that you're not necessarily in their their path knowing their behaviors so knowing what to look for um, if they're stressed or if they're relaxed things like that there are some wolves around certain times of the year um, so knowing that if we have a dog not necessarily to have your dog out at certain times of the year when they're around but typically if you're looking at you know wolf behavior they only stay for a day or two and they move on to new sections another thing is fishers we have fishers in the area I've seen one cross the road a couple years ago just up by our house here and how you know some people have fears if they're walking in the woods that the fisher is going to jump on them Again, I've been here for about eight years and never had that happen. I walk in the bush plenty. Just having knowledge of your surroundings, having knowledge of the animals in your area and having a knowledge on their behavior can really help you with that fear. So overcoming those fears, but also realizing your likelihood of coming across some of your fears of wildlife is pretty slim. And you're more often probably going to come across wildlife if you're buying a vacant forest land and cutting things down and building a house there rather than having like maybe an established home with a few neighbors this tends to be I don't know if you can see it but there's a little bit of a trail back here I go back here I've got some fruit trees planted in there and this tends to be the area where most of our wildlife comes from and then it ends up going out on the other side of our chicken run we do get um, like coyotes foxes raccoons um, different things coming through this little bit of a pathway you can see there's a pathway there there is definitely some animals that, that use this quite regularly but we don't really ever see them and because we have you know predator proofed our chicken coop as much as we can the less likelihoods of us even knowing they're here unless we have like a camera spying on them is pretty slim to none as well Another reason why not to homestead is if you are a social butterfly. One of the things that I hear a lot of people talk about when they're thinking about buying a country home or homesteading is isolation. Isolation is huge, especially if you're living so far away from the things that you're normally used to living with. It doesn't mean it has to be a deal breaker, but there are fewer opportunities for you to have an active social life. Most of your life is going to be spent at home, especially with me. Um, not only do I homestead, but I also homeschool um, our daughter. And so I am home probably about 95% of the time. Basically, when we started living here about eight years ago, we had a few friends that we would visit quite often and it was really good in the beginning so finding like a network of people in the beginning just to kind of help kind of you know transition you into being more at home more time with your family more time outside um, because when you are homesteading most of your time will be spent at home in the summer there's so much to do with your livestock so much to do with your garden but not only that you have you know um, you have the fall kind of winter prep you've got the spring winter prep you got the spring garden summer season prep and then at winter time um, things tend to slow down a lot but there's also like canning almost all year round if you wanted to 
um, especially with me home homeschooling our daughter, there's um, a lot of the time that I'm here doing school with her in between the things that I've got to do. You can find some social networks. There are definitely things out if you're looking, you know, in rural communities. Um, there are outreaches. Most communities have some supports, you know, with their churches or um, the community halls. They definitely have like things like dinners and, you know, events that you can attend just to get to know people locally. Um, that's a great way um, if you're thinking of living in the country and having a homestead, getting kind of those networks built up, you know, knowing um, some other homesteaders in the area. And it's also good because you can learn a lot off them if you're new to homesteading. So isolation is definitely, I know, a fear for a lot of people, um, especially if your husband or your other half is going to have to be going out to work um, it for you know long distance because of where you're living now and you will be at home more um, that is an issue but I can tell you personally from experience that after a while once you really get into homesteading and you become kind of busy doing the things that you do on a homestead you don't even really notice it anymore I find when we first started moving here we were always trying to find like an active social life but now um, that you know you know looking eight years later I find myself trying to make time for a social life because I feel like maybe I should get out more and do some things um, but most of the time if I could choose I would rather I'd rather just be home. So another topic that I want to talk about, um, especially if you're thinking about homesteading or you're not sure, is physical and mental health. So I would say like if you are a high stress person, a high anxiety person, maybe homesteading is not for you, but maybe it's exactly what you need. The reason why I say that is because there is a lot of demands when you're homesteading, a lot of physical demands, a lot of pressure, especially with time restraints, especially when it comes to gardening and livestock, especially when to coming to canning. If you have high anxiety, um, control is probably your number one coping mechanism, but you cannot control everything. You can't control a homestead. You have livestock, each with different needs and different personalities, and it can create a lot of stress on you and your family. Gardening is something that I absolutely am passionate about. I have personally experienced um, some health issues this past winter. I ha do have a video where I talk a little bit about that and I'm still kind of dealing with those things. I, you know, I lost my hearing in my one ear last winter, but I did have to scale back because not only did I have that hearing issue, but I've had a lot of like gut health issues. Just because, you know, we homestead, just because we're eating you know, good food and stuff, it doesn't mean we're not gonna have poor physical health or mental health. I know um, myself, like I'm very driven, goal driven, and I know that about myself. Just because you're homesteading doesn't mean that you also need to do all your livestock, do all your own butchering, do all your, you know, your canning and all this stuff, you know, all your gardening. Like one of the things I'm learning is like, you know what, I don't necessarily need to have all this pressure growing carrots and every year like stressing out because this year it works and this year it doesn't. There's years that I, you know, tend to get stressed about corn because I love growing corn. I love fresh corn. Well, you know, corn is very time sensitive to get in as well. You need to have the right temperature of your soil. It needs to be the right amount of days, the right amount of heat. There needs to be not a lot of rain. Um, it just makes it more difficult to get a good crop. And I'm like, you know what, why am I stressing out over that? I can go and get good fresh corn somewhere else. So looking at, you know, where to put your, your time and your energy into um, is another way of kind of reducing back and really preserving your mental and physical health. One of the other things that I do talk about is, you know, a lot of us are here doing it for our families. We do this lifestyle for our family, for our, our children, our husband and whatever else, even for ourselves. Um, but taking time. So if we're spent all of our time gardening, canning, cutting wood, whatever else, um, dealing with the livestock, and you're not actually spending time with your children or your husband, um, what real profit is there in it anyway so making sure that no matter what setting aside time for your family is so important you might get to a point of where you want to give it all up because you've taken on too much and I've seen that happen many many times where they're like you know I want to get into it. I want to get a homesteading and you go out and you buy every animal that you can think of that should be on the homestead and you garden like 10 times and that's not healthy if you're thinking of getting into this lifestyle really take a look at what you can actually do 
do and what you actually want to do. Anyways, I hope that this has helped you kind of see kind of all aspects of reasons not to homestead or reasons to homestead. If you have enjoyed this, that you will stick around, hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell as well, let you know when we have new videos coming out and that we can continue having some of these um, discussions and topics in the future and just making that transition into um, you know city living and country living a little bit easier as well as really finding out if this lifestyle is really for you or not.